Hey everyone, CPO here and I'm in the garage and today is gonna to be a bike upgrade day. So this is a Trek Marlin 7 of the 2019 variety and it's gonna get a one by upgrade. That's right, I'm putting on a SRAM Eagle one by 12. This is the NX version and uh, there's a specific reason why I'm doing the NX and I'll explain that to you. So there's a lot of people who have the Trek Marlin uh, because it's a great entry level sort of budget minded a way to get into mountain biking and it's it's a great platform and um, then they don't know where they can go with upgrades. So as their riding improves, their abilities improve or they just desire uh, to put more into the bike. Now some people will say it's not worth upgrading, go out and buy a new bike, uh, a Roscoe or something like that, or, or, or another you know, $1,000 to $1,500 bike. But I don't really necessarily agree with that. I don't think it's a problem to take a bike like this, which is a great entry level bike, a good opportunity to learn, not only about riding, but about taking care of a bike. Once you've gotten through that, it, becomes your bike and you enjoy it and you like it, so why not upgrade it? So um, I've already done some things to this bike that I'm not really gonna cover in this video. I will do a total bike check video when I get done with all this stuff. I put a Manitou Markor fork on it. I've boosted it to 120 millimeters of travel. I have a uh, KS uh, stem, went to 50 millimeter from 80 millimeter. I put Ergon grips on it. Uh, what else? I went tubeless, tubeless conversion with Maxxis uh, tires. I have the Ardent up front and the Crossmark II in the rear. And uh, yeah, oh, a, a KS dropper post. So I've done some stuff to it and it's almost done. Uh, but what I really want to do is get rid of this 3x system, go with the 1x12. I did some experimentation with uh, gear range calculators online. And as you can see here, uh, the conversion from the 3x9 that I have to the 1x12 uh, SRAM Eagle, really, I don't lose a lot of range. I lose a little bit of the, of the higher gear range. So on the top end of the speed spectrum, I'll lose just a little bit. But to test that and how I feel about that, I went out riding and I avoided those top gears. Matter of fact, I stayed off of uh, the larger chain ring all together in the front just to see what it means to me. And I think this gear ratio that I'm gonna end up with is gonna be perfect. Now I am going to an oval chain ring in the front as a part of this install. So a 32 tooth oval plus the one by 12, uh, which is at 11 to 50 should be a great mix. So I'm gonna break this uh, series into several videos. So I'm gonna work on separate components uh, and, and build them into little bite-sized chunk videos instead of having to have you watch an entire video to see the upgrade. Many of you are gonna be interested in wondering like what's involved with upgrading a uh, three by, in this case, nine to a one by 12. Now there are a couple things to note with regard to the Trek Marlin series. There's a five, a six, and a seven. And that's where most people sort of uh, try and make their decisions. Should I buy the five or the six? Should I buy the six or the seven? The first Trek Marlin I rode, the one that I fell in love with was a five. Uh, but I wanted a fork with lockout and uh, that pushed me to the six. And then I'm looking at the six and I'm like, okay, well, that's a better fork, but still not as good of a fork. And um, I can get a better group set. Uh, shadow derailleur, a better lockout fork. If I go to the seven, so I, I went seven. Uh, in the end, if I, if I did this over again, I would buy the six because almost, actually when I get done with this, everything that was an upgrade from six to seven, I will have now replaced, right? So uh, if I'd have known I was gonna go through all of these upgrades, I'd have started with the six, saved a few hundred bucks, not a lot, saved a few hundred bucks though. And then, uh, and then upgrade everything as I'm upgrading it today. I could not have started with a five, and this is an important note. The five has a different hub. It's, uh, it's got the free will instead of the free hub. And so you can't upgrade 
to the one by 12 drivetrain if you have a five, unless you change the hub, which really means changing the wheel set. Uh, you're gonna probably end up just changing wheels. So keeping with the factory Trek uh, Bontrager wheels that came with the six and seven, you can go to a one by 12. If you have the five, you can't. So um, just fair warning on that. The five uh, comes with a three by seven gear set. The six comes with a three by eight and the seven comes with a three by nine. So if you have the three by eight or the three by nine, you're good to go to follow these directions exactly. If you have a three by seven, you're gonna need a different hub to either get something with a three by nine, three by eight, uh, or straight up one by. Uh, at that point, you may want a hub with an XD driver. Uh, so you wanna spend more money if you're gonna upgrade and upgrade better. Uh, but we can do uh, this one by 12 conversion and, uh, and I think it's gonna be worth it on the stock wheel set. And yeah, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do before I do anything is I'm gonna weigh this bike because I do know that there is gonna be some weight benefit in uh, switching to the one by system. I'm just curious how much. It doesn't matter to me a whole lot, but I really would like to see it. So I'm gonna stand this up on here. And uh, right now I'm at 29 pounds even. And uh, that's pretty impressive actually. That's quite a bit lighter than the bike came from the factory. The reason I'm at 29 pounds now is because I've already changed the fork. Uh, the Manitou Mark IV fork is quite a bit lighter. I went to a lighter uh, stem and I went tubeless. Uh, so all that has netted me uh, some weight reduction. So I'm curious to see now with the one by 12, how much lower I can get the weight on this. So it's actually quite cost effective to do this upgrade with the NX series. Oh, I forgot, I was gonna tell you why the NX. Well, the NX series, it's the lower end of the Eagle group sets. There's NX, GX, and it just gets more and more expensive and lighter from there. But the, the NX is the one that allows you to use the standard free hub that's on these Shimano's. Again, uh, three by eight and higher. So um, that's why I don't have to change the hub. If I did the GX version, the level up, then I would have to have an XD driver and that won't work. So NX is what you want if you're going on a stock Shimano uh, free hub uh, wheel set. But with that said, um, it's, you know, you can get 350-ish in that sort of uh, price range and there's a few other miscellaneous parts. We're gonna need a new bottom bracket, uh, dub uh, bottom bracket. So um, I'll explain all that when I get into those individual parts, uh, what uh, is in there and then what I'm replacing it with. And then you're gonna need some specialized tools. So if you don't have a lot of bike tools laying around, you're gonna have to get some of that stuff or borrow it. So the initial cost of the parts isn't that bad, but uh, if you have to buy a whole bunch of different tools to make it happen, uh, it starts to, to climb up. And some of those tools aren't super cheap uh, to get a hold of. So uh, just keep that in mind and I'll show you all of the tools I'm using as I go through the process. So if you do wanna tackle this, you'll know exactly what you need.